folks, my name's Ben, welcome to Shots Fired Airsoft. Now, uh, for this video, something I've been waiting to do for a, a couple of weeks now, we're gonna have the full firing test of the Sabre M20X, which is the full billet, all balls out version of the Sabre M20X. It's already a pretty special blaster. Uh, this has been the culmination of sort of years of development and work that Sabre have done in the Nerf manual springer sort of area. And uh, it features a lot of very high-end materials, it is very weighty, and it is a full sniper class blaster, which is what the S stands for in M20S. Uh, often there's always a bit of discussion about whether you can have a Nerf sniper rifle, or whether it's just uh, the insane fever dream of a madman. Uh, but here we are, we've got it. Now, this is every inch the serious end of the performance market. We have over 400 FPS on the highest spring, but it can take other springs and it functions very well above 200 FPS to about 400 to 450, depending on what darts you're using. Yes, that's right, 450. Um, that is like nine joules, nine and a half, 10 joules. So compared to like airsoft, this is real power. Um, as for ranges and such, we will find out in this video. Uh, Around 80, 80 meters is an effective range for this, which when you think about it, that's pretty far for a Nerf gun to fire. Um, however, calling this a Nerf gun is a bit like <laughs> describing a monster truck as a pickup. Um, so yeah, there are a couple of caveats I wanna make with this. Uh, because of the high performance envelope of this blaster, it is somewhat difficult to stretch its legs on camera. I will try my best. Uh, the other thing is that some darts, some very well thought of darts, just aren't designed with this kind of FPS in mind. And trying to put this much power through a dart in a barrel can sometimes cause issues. Uh, so, for example, things like the Worker 2, uh, the Worker Gen 2 high end darts, which are a go to dart for a lot of the hobby and are very good quality, actually have quite a lot of issues coming out of this thing. They, I don't know what it is, it's either a dart seal issue or I, I have a theory that it could be the air getting into the dart stem is so pressure, so there's so much pressure in the dart stem, it's actually expanding the foam against the sides of the barrel and dragging the dart down in terms of speed. But whatever, what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw this through the chrono first just to let you know what it's about and then um, we'll get into having a bit of a closer look at the blaster and then some firing footage of what I can get from it anyway. Uh, is a little bit windy today, but we do have the scope cam, varying darts, and probably about 100 meters of range. So we're gonna see what we can do. Let's get into it. Okay, so I'm gonna be sat here with you today, and we're gonna go through this bit by bit. This is 14 kilos uh, on the 650 millimeter barrel, uh, with the 30 bearing scar on the end. So there'll be quite a lot of drag uh, from this, however, uh, we're going to see what it, it can do. This is Worker Gen 2 HE darts, which function seemingly fine on the 14 and 18 kilo spring until we get to the 26s, it starts to have problems. Uh, so we're going to do Gen 2 HE, we're going to do uh, Gen 3, I've brought a few of them along with me as well, the Worker Gen 3 darts. Uh, I'm not going to use the Dragons until we get higher up in the FPS range because I only have about 15 of those on hand and I don't want to fire them too many times. And then we are going to hit some homemade bamboo darts that I've done out of the work at Gen 2 HEs, which is the only way of getting them to fire out the 26 kilo version of this. Right, here we are. So I'm gonna do about five darts of each, because there's gonna be a lot of lot of uh, lot of firing, so 282, not a bad start. 269.6 Back up to 282, 276.8, and 267.3. So bouncing around a little bit there. Um, Got to say, the more power you put through this thing, the more consistent it becomes. So we're going to swap now. I'm going to put five Gen 3s for it, and we'll see what happens then. Okay, so here we go. What we've got here now are some Gen 3 darts. 274, 256, don't like these as much, 276, 276 again, and the last start, 269.6. So we didn't get as high as the Gen 2 HEs, 
it is generally accepted that the Gen 2 HEs are a better dart than Gen 2, so it's not really a surprise. Uh, however, for consistency, they're about the same. Here we go with one that I didn't mention. This is five AF Pro darts. Strong start, 274. 276.8, continuation, strong. 279, nice and consistent so far. 274, 267.3. A little bit of a let down there, nearly got more than the 270 bracket, but there's a strong showing for AF Pros out of this setup. So now we've got some wild cards. These are GOS Night Darts, which are about 0.7 of a gram, so these are lighter. Uh, you would use these primarily in CQB environments, especially in the dark, because these are tracer darts used with a uh, tracer. So let's see what they can do for the chrono at 14 with the 650mm barrel. There we go, just over 300 is what we're expecting. 307, 298, 310, and the last one, 310 again. So strong showing for the GRS darts. Like I say, you wouldn't necessarily use them over long ranges because being a lighter dart, they will vary in accuracy a lot more. Well, not vary in accuracy, they'll be consistently bad. <laughs> it's kind of what I'm saying, over long range at high FPS. The CQB though, if you want a dart to get there quicker than someone else's dart, they're a good bet. Okay, a bit of an interesting one now. These are five worker Gen 2 HE darts that I've bambooed at home using the worker moulds. So we'll see how these go. One of them does have a bit of a dent in it in the body, so I want to see if that affects FPS. So if you see a sudden low value, that might be what that is. So without further ado, let's see what she'll do. 274.5, 274 and a half, 276.8, 279.4. 289.9, yes. So, until that last start, far more consistent than the unbambooed Gen 2 HEs, which is interesting to say the least. But uh, that last shot will show you the potential that we will see later as we move up the spring weights. Okay, so we've moved up to the 18 kilogram spring now. So this is about mid power. Uh, uh, here we go with five worker Gen 2 HEs. These are the standard darts, non-bamboo. Strong start, 337, I can feel the burn on the prime. 337 again. 327. 330. And the last start, 337. So, like I said, consistency as power increases actually gets a bit better, uh, which is a strange effect, but generally the larger your plunger tube, the longer your barrel, they like to have a bigger spring. It keeps, the, uh, it keeps the air pressure high, which means that any little hang-ups or anything the dart has in the barrel are less of an issue. Here we go, we're gonna have three worker Gen 3s because I only brought a handful with me. To be honest, they're not really aimed live this test, it was more just to see how they performed. And if they decapped, which wouldn't be a surprise with this kind of power level. So we're gonna see if they can hang with the 18 kilo spring. 327, 323, 323. So about 10 FPS behind the Gen 2 HEs. Um, nice and consistent though, and uh, they all made it out of the barrel. None of them just shot the heads. Let's move on to some a bit more serious darts. We're gonna run some more AF Pros for it. Okay, I'm back. AF Pros, 18 kilograms. Let's see how she does. 334, not bad at all. 330. 334. 334 again. 337, so they hang very well with the worker Gen 2s. They actually have a slightly better consistency and uh, an eventual slightly higher peak as well. So that's quite impressive. AF Pros are a good dart, I've always quite liked them. Um, I must admit the lack, relative lack of availability compared to a lot of the worker stuff and other darts over this side of the pond means I don't use them as often, but they are a good dart. Worker Gen 2 HE Bamboo Darts. Five of. 
let's see how we do. So the, the other Gen 2s are about 330. 320. 320 again. 330. 361. 341. Okay, so consistency there, not fantastic. It does show you the high performance envelope of a bamboo dart. However, I bambooed these at home. So there isn't necessarily the kind of consistency you would get out of a factory produced dart like all the other darts are in this test. But it does show you that even over five, you can see the potential of having a bamboo dart compared to a standard dart. Hold on to your hats, night darts, 18 kilos. Let's see what she can do. Should see some good numbers. 357, 370, 366, 366 again, last dart. Oh, 341, I think I hit the side of the chrono on that one. Yeah, that's going some. 370 on 18 kilo. A, that's a lot of power. Um, so these are these are light, lightweight darts, they're around 0.7 grams, but even so, I wouldn't particularly want to be hit one of those on bare skin at that kind of speed. So here we go. I have dragon darts in the mag. So these are your EPP darts. Stiff bone body, still got a rubber head. However, these are a bit of a darling of the We Want The Most FPS community because they are very consistent. Uh, they still weigh 0.9 grams, so they're still quite a heavyweight dart. <laughs> but let's see what they'll do. 366, shattering the backboard there. 374.9, 370, 370 again, 366. Yeah, so that. That's what you can expect from Dragon Darts over a chronograph. They are unbelievable. Now, I've not really had much of an opportunity to play with them in actual games. They are very expensive to buy. Um, so, just to give you an idea, a, a box of Gen 2 Worker HEs for 200 is usually under a tenner in the UK, uh, under 10 pound a box. Dragon Darts are more like 20 quid for 100. So they are, a magnitude, an order of magnitude more expensive than your average uh, nerf dart. However, some people would argue the performance is worth it. I need to see what they do over a range, which is what we're going to find out during this firing test of the M20X. Okay, folks, it's time for the 26 kilo spring. Uh, for those of you wondering why I have both the uh, angled foregrip prime and the sidebar prime, it is because of this spring. It is almost impossible, not impossible, but very, very difficult to prime the blaster with what is essentially 55 pounds of spring weight <laughs> at max compression uh, with the AFG, hence the sidebar prime is very handy to have. I normally just run the AFG because I tend to run this around 14 to 18 kilos for uh, gameplay. Uh, you don't really need 400, you're not trying to blow a foam jumbo jet out of the air when you're playing a CQB game. but. Uh, it's nice to have the option. So we're going to start off with the Worker Gen 2 HEs and these are the standard darts and I'm hoping that they do essentially what I'm expecting them to do, which is to show off precisely why they have issues in this blaster at this power level. <sighs> gotcha. The achievement priming that thing. Right, and here we go. 26, Worker Gen 2 HEs. That's a nasty noise and 357 and a half FPS. Again, nasty noise, 361, so only about 20 to 25 more than the standard of the 18 kilo spring. And again, 361. It's actually being quite consistent at the moment. 345.3 and the last start 345.3 so it didn't really do what I was hoping it was going to do every now and then 
it will sound like absolute death when you fire it and it, a dart will just fall out the end of the barrel at like 100 fps that's still 30 more than what a standard nerf blaster fires but still um that's very very low uh, obviously you can see that for our extra eight kilogram of spring load we are getting at the moment about 10 to 15 fps more than we had before which is not worth it there is something funky about the Gen 2 HE through this. So we're gonna move along, I'm gonna show you what the other darts do so you can make your own decision. This is just a couple of AF Pros. Uh, from memory, these are a bit better than the Gen 2 HEs, but still not fantastic, because these are still full body darts. Yeah. 374.9, it's not shabby, but as you'll see in a minute, when we go to the bamboo style darts, the dragons and the night darts, you'll see how much faster they are. Yeah, still. Better than the Gen 2 HEs. Uh, I've only fired two because I only have two, so that's pretty much it for AF Pros. Uh, it probably goes without saying, really, that when you're firing Nerf darts at this kind of velocity, they tend to uh, have issues with build quality. So I'm not refiring any of the darts that I've already fired, um, just because I don't want a head to blow off and end up with a foam body stuck in the barrel. It's a right pain in the ass. Moving along. These are night darts, and from my testing, this should be the best performance so far. But do bear in mind that the AF Pros are doing around 380 FPS, and these darts are 0.3 of a gram lighter. They are almost <laughs> a relatively heavyweight BB lighter than a regular Nerf dart, so they should be better as long as the foam is good. There we are. Our first over 400 shots, it's a 415. Nice and consistent, still going up, 421. 421 again. I am absolutely annihilating my backboard at this point. I just have to get a new one from Coldwell. Oh, that is 410 FPS, lowest one so far. And we finish with 415. We're getting savage now, guys. Getting absolutely savage. Okay, these are Worker Gen 2 Home Bambooed HE darts. So, what we're expecting here is a bit more FPS and a bit more consistency than the standard Gen 2s. There we go. And there we are, straight away. Just the different shape of the body, 410 FPS. No chance of getting the other workers anywhere near that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like I said, consistency may be an issue with my home bamboo ring. Back up to 400. That's more what we're expecting. And again, straight back to 349. I'm definitely going to have to get some factory bamboo darts. Oh, that was a bad one. Oh. I'm just going to fire a couple more of those through. Let's see if I can't get a bit more of an idea of how uh, it fires. I'm pretty certain that the shout is going to be to use bamboo shaped darts out of this. Uh, let's try another three, see how it goes. That's more like it. Not quite 400, but I think I'll give it a there. Well, you can kind of see the uh, see the potential there again. Um, I say I think a lot of the issues have been caused by the fact that I bambooed these at home, um, so I'm going to need to get uh, a proper like worker supplied bag of Gen 2 bamboo darts, and I think that they will give us good 400 FPS plus consistency out of this blaster. Right, it's time. Let's move on to dragons and see why they are the hot ticket for this blaster and other high powered blasters. Okay guys, I have six dragon darts loaded up in this. Uh, I've saved three because I'm gonna split this video into two parts because my arm is killing me and I, the weather's going off and I don't think that it'd be fair to try and range us out at 70 meters in high winds, etc., etc. So I'm gonna run these six through the chrono. We're gonna have a little closer look at the blaster and then I'm gonna cool it and we'll do the firing test in another video. Dragon darts. 9.1 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 
Four thirty two point nine. Four forty five point four. Four thirty nine point one. Four thirty nine point one again. Four thirty nine point one. So that's the consistency that you get out of dragon darts. Uh, when I was firing it last night, I actually managed to get 445 and 450. Um, all of these dragon darts are already used uh, and they do take a bit of damage when they're being fired at this kind of FPS. But even so, if I just pull up the average on here, you can see there, those last six shots were all dragon darts. I've got one free. This is for some reason my chronograph displays uh, FPS, but then it actually tells you what they are in meters per second. 133, 133, 133, 135, 132, and 133 at 400 plus FPS is incredible consistency after the dragon darts. This thing, this barrel, loves the dragon darts. So, well, that's done. My arm is on fire from priming this thing. So let's get this on the bench and have a closer look at what we're dealing with. Just as a little bonus for anyone that's uh, watched through this far, I actually just found a Gen 2 ACC hard tip dart. So these are darts that are not designed for gameplay essentially, they're designed for sort of ply blinking and target shooting and these have a very hard plastic tip. And we're going to chrono it and then it's going to hit a bottle as it comes out the chrono. And we're going to see what kind of damage it does. To the plastic bottle. Right. ACC Gen 2, this is a dart I found on the floor of my unit, so it may not work very well. It worked quite well. 366, so that is a rough shot, bearing in mind that the hotter darts we've been trying have been 410, 420. Uh, just gotta find the bottle quick. It didn't quite make it through, it left an extreme pressure mark on it though. I think one of those darts, if it was fresh and clean and was 400 plus, would probably go through that. Which is a uh, water bottle material, it's quite it's a tough, tough material. If that was a coke can, it'd blow through both sides and goes through the top of the cardboard after that. I know this because I've tried it. Uh, the folks are back with me now, and we're going to have a little look around this blaster whilst I talk. They're essentially in my hands. Uh, first of all, just want to speak about the barrel setup. Uh, this is the 650mm barrel and it presently has the 30 bearing scar on it. Uh, when you purchase this blaster, uh, you actually get another barrel which has the internal string scar uh, that uh, Sabre install and uh, that is also extremely accurate. Uh, there is a lot of discussion as to whether or not that this uh, bearing uh, scar is more or less accurate than the string scar. Some will tell you it is, some will tell you it isn't. However, one thing you do notice is that it definitely takes less FPS off at the top end, which is exactly what it is designed to do. You can see the ball bearings in there, and essentially as the dart flies through, they impart spin to the dart without slowing it down too much, unlike the string that causes a lot of drag. The barrel itself is a 16mm outer diameter, roughly 30mm inner diameter um, aluminium barrel, polished inside and uh, it attaches to the blaster with this large nut on the front and uh, essentially what that does is it ensures that the barrel is centered and uh, always sits correctly on the pusher when the pusher is rammed home. Uh, the standard uh, blaster as it comes out of the box has only the side prime however there is parts in the box to install a, an angled foregrip or any sort of foregrip of your choice however you do have to be careful because when this uh, prime is fully back anything which extends towards the rear of the blaster is going to contact the magazine so that's why i run an angled foregrip i just happen to prefer them anyway if you prefer vertical grip just be careful what you put on there uh, the parts that make up this priming assembly like the linear uh, bearing priming rods and the uh, black oxide steel priming components which I believe they are because they're definitely a lot heavier than aluminium are incredibly well made uh, you can see all stainless hardware on this blaster as well uh, just get a close-up of the shell for a minute down here where the uh, Sabre logo is this is billet aluminium it is then sandblasted to give it a textured finish and then anodized 
uh, in whatever color you choose to pick. Uh, there are a lot of colours available for this when I uh, first picked it up, however, I thought the black and gold really does look quite special. So that's what I've gone for. Uh, also on the front of the blaster, you actually have M-Lock uh, rail running down the side. So I've got an M-Lock uh, little bipod sat in there, just so literally so I can keep it in place whilst I'm uh, using two hands to show you this blaster. Uh, it is quite long. Uh, I'm going to have a little complaint, um, not really anything crazy. Uh, this magazine, is, or this magware rather, is Talon compatible. And uh, what essentially that means is, is that you can run pretty much any Talon design mag, uh, which is pretty ubiquitous in Nerf. My only complaint is if you look at it, if you can see inside there, you can see the mag is leaving dust behind. Uh, this mag is in fact very tight or the magwell is very tight and uh, you can see if I hold this up in front the shavings and everything coming off of that mag which is the one I've been using for the firing tests it's a bit unnecessarily tight the magwell um, which obviously hinders uh, application of the mag and removal of the magazine however um, I'm not going to complain about the fact that the pusher is actually not a Vanguard style pusher so essentially it's not a skinny pusher because this blaster is built for power and Vanguard pushers tend to rob you of a bit of that power by having a slim uh, ram it actually means that the internal diameter of the air channel is smaller so I don't blame Sabre for not putting a skinny pusher in this which essentially means that you can't put a mag in whilst the bolt is, or certainly the pusher is forward. So you have to prime it back to reload. Trigger and mag release, absolutely stunning. Uh, please ignore the grip that I've had to nail onto this. It's just one I had lying around. Um, they are beautifully machined aluminium and uh, feel fantastic. The trigger itself is very lovely. The sear system and everything in this is beautifully made and very smooth. Uh, top mount rail, Picatinny monolithic all the way down the blaster. Uh, takes any standard airsoft slash real steel uh, firearm accessories. Uh, what else we got on this side? Just general artwork, Sabre Blaster is fantastic. I love their logo and uh, it looks fantastic on the black. Uh, do have a slight issue with the blue barrel. Um, I would like a black one. They are presently making black barrels for it uh, and they will be available imminently and I will probably be picking up one of those. It is also a 700mm barrel or you can get a 700mm barrel which it may well quite enjoy. Stock is adjustable but it's not quickly adjustable. I mean it's relatively quick. Essentially there are two thumb screws that go through the side that are threaded and they retain in the holes in these uh, rods that actually locate your uh, presently selected adjustment of the stock essentially. And then that top bar is like a stabilizing bar that runs down inside the blaster um, and that retracts with the uh, stop, the butt plate essentially at the back there. It's a pretty slick system, it's built for strength. Um, other thing you've got around the back of the blaster, I'll just come around here. Uh, you'll see there there is an adjustable spring rest uh, and that is your quick change spring cap and you can screw that in by about I don't know, about an inch or so and that actually gives you more pre-compression on your spring which means that you are going to get more power. Again another really nice little touch. In general it is built stunningly well. There is not really too much more to say on it when you're actually looking around it. It is just a beautiful piece of kit. And uh, it's expensive, don't get me wrong. However, there are other options in the Sabre range if you do not want to spend this kind of money. I mean, these, I believe they are doing another run of them, but they are built to order. So if you do not order one, you cannot buy one. Uh, they are not just sitting around on shelves. These are built to order. If I just come around the other side of the blaster, I don't think there's too much more to see. Yep. Other than the sidebar prime setup. If I get it focused. There we are. So you can see the sidebar prime bolts straight through the side of the priming assembly. And uh, actually comes with a, a set of ball bearings. So the uh, the actual fire itself can spin, which is great. So when you're uh, 
when you're priming it back, it doesn't kind of rub your hand and abrade it. But uh, yeah, the sidebar is very, very handy when you're running the big boy springs. And just look at that thing. That is unbelievable. It feels incredible to hold. Uh, it weighs over four kilos at the moment with all the accessories on it. So it is a, not a light blaster. Uh, if you are going to run it, you want to run it in a situation where you can use its power. You do not want to be running this around in CQB. Really, an M20 would be far more suitable for that. There's another look at that back end there. Yeah, so absolutely a stunning piece of kit. Uh, hello. I'm going to split this video into two parts. The chronograph data is obviously taking quite a while to pick up and get. My shoulder is killing me from priming that blaster over and over and over again. Definitely going to forget like a pad or something for this bit of my uh, <laughs> bit of my shoulder for doing the 26. Because uh, obviously when we're doing the firing, I'm pretty much just going to have the 40, 26 in it. Um, it fires beautifully on the 40 and the 18, but the 26 is what's going to give us the range. So I've been Ben. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for the second part of this video, which will feature the full firing footage. And I hope to see you there. Thank you very much and goodbye.